Hello, welcome back to part two of my interview with the artist Eshwan Winding. Live on a sunny Sunday in San Miguel de Allende, that's the mimosa. Yes. <laughs> How long have you lived here? It is 17 years now. I find it to be not only a beautiful place, but a very cultural and artistic. Very supportive of the arts. That's, one of, that's the main reason I'm here. And on that note, uh, as I mentioned before, I've had the privilege of selecting slash curating the works that I really love and want to know more about. And these two encaustics, I work in encaustic myself and know how incredibly challenging it is to create faces in encaustic. You're painting with a flame, things move around. I am so impressed by these and their potency. Can you tell me a little bit more yes, about that? Yes, this series was, I, I did for a gallery here, and it was for a solo show, and it was called The Time of Wisdom. It was the time for me, because I had been, at that time I'd been here about four years, and I was beginning to discover the differences, the wonderful difference and the baffling differences between the Mexican culture and the one I was used to from the States. And I really began to uh, experience and appreciate the strength of Mexican women, my very dear friend at that time was a Mexican and who helped me to get into the, the uh, models' homes, to get to know them, to know more about them. And it was an incredible experience, which I could have not have done on my own. So each one of these models is, is a, a, a Mexican woman who crossed my path and touched me. The one on the left uh, over there was a, my uh, neighbor. And she lived in less than humble uh, uh, surroundings. Her home, if you could call it that, uh, was filled with plants. And but she was always out on the street selling her her corn, and never um, unhappy look on her face. So I asked her to pose for me, and I always paid my models. And she came in, and I said, "And please don't smile." <laughs> this was her not smiling. It Even was, her eyes are smiling. It was impossible for that woman not to express her love of life and joy. Now there's a completely different expression and yes, one, <laughs> captured this one here. It's called the strength of the Maya. I was visiting in Chiapas, and uh, she was not welcoming, but I understood. I understood the history, I, and as, as a child in high school, I understood. I studied uh, the Mexican Revolution and, and Latin American history, so I know a part of it. But to be there and experience the energy was something, something very special. And with respect. Oh, with respect, total respect. Yes, with honor. It was not as my uh, Mexican friend told me. She said, "We're not monkeys in the zoo. You're not just taking photos of us." So this is why it, this series was so important to me to get to know the women, be part of their lives and create individual insights and profiles. Yes. Now, yes. speaking of that friend, mm -hmm. this is a painting of her. It's not from the same series, but a similar time frame. Uh, yes, it was done in the same time frame. Her name was Maria Teresa, and uh, she had been educated in the States and served in the, uh, the nurse in the Coast Guard, or some service. And she was explaining to me things I would never have known. <laughs> And she was telling me about how, as an external hero, a foreigner, I would really not know what a Mexican was thinking because they wear a mask. And uh, it, it, which comes from the time that the conquistadores were here and they would never let to the, uh, the Spaniards know what they were feeling and thinking. And it doesn't mean that they're not feeling deeply and they can't be your friends, but the masks are part of their their protection and also part of their heritage and their ceremonies. So on the right, you will see an Aztec mask. Mask, and this was basically carved right into the layer, deep layers of encaustic. And that's 100% encaustic, correct? 100% wow, encaustic, that's yes. beautiful. Thank you. And through my travels, my personal travels in Mexico, I am so impressed, and I've collected many masks, of how they are used in ceremony yes. and in society. And they're very important here, yes. And speaking of the revolution, the fourth piece I have chosen to highlight is called The Revolution, correct? Yes, this was another uh, uh, gallery show, and it was about revolution. And this was my uh, contribution to that show. This is all done in encaustic also. Many, many layers, and there's all kinds of messages in there about revolutions around the world. 
I'm not one a big who likes a lot of obvious words telling you what to think. So they're kind of hidden under the layers of encaustic. But Subtle but powerful point, messages. Yes, it is powerful. And as a good curator, I wanted to color coordinate our Sunday mimosas <laughs> with this gorgeous cold wax, correct? That's cold wax back. painting, yes. It was part of my uh, color healing series. And also an homage to Mexico. I had the privilege of going to the butterfly sanctuary. What an experience. Yes, the, the monarch butterflies. Mm -hmm. And as yes, very much a fresco quality to it. There's a lot of drawing in charcoal. Charcoal with all kinds of things. There were uh, transfers, there were build up with stencils and uh, and drawing, of course, too. Um, even though it's not from the same series, I have paired that painting with these two exquisite figurative ones. The series is called? This is Altered Faces. As I mentioned in the last interview, I've always been fascinated with faces. And it's just so much fun for me to, to paint. It's not work at all. But I recognize it, it, to make it interesting, it has to be more than just a beautiful young woman's face. So I incorporated lots of other different techniques to bring it into to the now. And, and as uh, women are moving into a new era of their lives too, to make it more powerful. That was done with oil, with encaustic, and the, quite a bit of cold wax over the encaustic for the texturing and stenciling. And as I've mentioned many times to you, Ashwan, I so admire your incredible range and efficiency. I love this painting. I hope the viewers can see all of that texture. It's almost like a sculpture. And this is from what series? This is called Into the Silence. It's again, it's a, almost a repeat of many of the uh, series I've done about women's quiet time. And they talk about women's intuition, not that men don't have it, but going into your, your, your deep quiet space where the thoughts rest and you can really check in with your heart and soul. And so all of this series was about women in that quiet space. And there's a lot of texturing over the, the flat surface. And this is from a different series, uh, not that painting should coordinate, color coordinate, but I personally have found this to be connected. It is, well, because as I mentioned earlier that I want each of my paintings to have a reason for being. And this is called La Entrada, the entrance. And I feel like you're only almost coming up from underwater and with, with coral reefs or fish around going into the light which is a part of going into your intuition and your own inner light. This is all encaustic, many, many layers of, of encaustic. But I'm seeing how each of the son of Sam Miguel, yeah, sparks of gold leaf, gorgeous. It's subtle, but it's flickering like a fish would under the surface of the water. Thank you. And another one of my favorites, this is from the color series. This is the, the color healing series, and obviously it's blue. Blue has a, uh, energy of cooling and calming and, and restfulness. And so this is the, obviously the blue one. That's done with encaustic, some uh, china markers and some uh, transfers. So the last three paintings I wanted to highlight for this interview are all encaustic. And Eshwin, I would love some insight on these two, because these, again, like everything you do, they're related and yet so different. It's interesting. This is uh, part of the, the series or uh, group I sent to the gallery recently, and I changed my palette. And these are both done with the same palette, but completely different energy. The one on the left is geometric, which is not the way I used to, used to work. And it happened, it just kept growing in this way. And I thought about, this is strange, where is this coming from in me? And I thought, well, maybe it's a feeling of wanting to 
have some kind of a, a formula for, for stability in this time of not knowing what we were going on, but still having a flow and having it move and, look, and be beautiful. And the one on the, the right is completely different. It's again an opening. It almost looks like it's surrounded by butterflies or birds or something light. Same palette, but completely different feelings. I, I paint intuitively when, uh, when I'm working with the abstract, and it, it just comes, and then I do say, oh, what it, where is this coming from? Where is this hap how is this happening? And sometimes it leads me on a journey that is successful. Most times it does. Well, the difference of, between you and myself as a painter is you know instinctively when it works, when it doesn't, and when to rework. This is another piece from The Lightness of Being. I love these works. It's kind of a stretch, but I'm a big fan of Kandinsky and his lyrical compositions and the fluidity of his compositions. Thank you. And I just, I want to dive in and dance with this painting. What a lovely thing to say. I so appreciate your comments and you choosing the, the work that you wanted to curate and talk about. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Bye.